another star is born. Mary Martin, co-starring with Jack Benny and Fred Allen in Paramount Pictures' Love Thy Neighbor, is at LaGuardia Airport, New York City, to bid bon voyage to the new Latin discovery, Esther Fernandez, who is flying west for a screen test. TWA announces the departure of the Super Sky Chief Strata Liner for Chicago, Kansas City, Albuquerque, and Los Angeles. Gate number three. All aboard, please. In a few short years, the travel habits of millions of women have changed to this comfortable and smooth mode of transportation, just as their modes of dress have shifted from the uncomfortable bustle and hobble skirts of yesterday. Day and night, these mighty ships of commerce fly the air lanes from Atlantic to Pacific spanning the nation in 15 hours. Up, up, high up into the substratosphere rises the 45-ton TWA Stratoliner. On into a night sky, the big silver liner speeds swiftly over sleeping villages and great cities. Dawn finds our air voyagers flying over the Texas Panhandle and the colorful mesas of New Mexico. It's a fairyland of tumbling castles far above where the raindrops form. Bridging the horizons in seven-league boots, our passengers ride comfortably in altitude-conditioned cabins. Let's take a peek in the strata liner and see how our passenger is doing. Why, of course, like every woman, she's taking a last look in the mirrors of the strata liner's charm room. Bienvenido, buenos dias, senorita. She is trimly tailored in a Cyril Johnson covert cloth suit. Met by Dee Lawrence, fashion editor of Paramount, Esther is told she is to get off her plane and act in a location picture with four other studio players, just now landing from Hollywood. First is lovely Martha O'Driscoll of screen and radio fame. Margaret Hayes from the New York stage in Hollywood is next, while pretty Virginia Dale follows and waves to movie fans gathered at the airport. Take notice of the smart airplane luggage that the air passengers are using. It's Halliburton luggage, especially travel tested by TWA for air passengers. Metal alloys make for light weight and durability. As the baggage is unloaded, we hear a rhythmic chant. A group of Pueblo Indians who are to appear with Esther in the screen test beat out a buffalo dance, while a bronzed young brave stamps out the ancient hunting steps of the Navajos. His bow and arrow marks the cadence as he flourishes them in the dance. Quiet, action, camera. You are now seeing the color screen test of Esther made through the lens of a studio camera. Esther, changed into ceremonial garb, now makes her first bid for fame in Hollywood. Good luck, Esther. In the meantime, let's visit Isleta Pueblo with Margaret Hayes and Virginia Dale who have some spare time for sightseeing. Virginia wears a desert blue reefer coat cut in the casual style. Margaret's adobe tan top coat, tossed carelessly over her shoulder, blends with the crumbling adobe ruins. One little, two little, three little Indian girls. Perhaps your garments were inspired by the rich colorings worn by these Indian women. Margaret next meets Louise Abeta, pretty Indian girl who has written a children's book illustrated beautifully by an Indian artist friend. The girls next visit the mission of San Antonio de Esleta, built in 1621, just one year after the Mayflower landed on our eastern shores. Here in the faith brought them by Coronado in 1620, the Pueblo Indians reverently worship the God of the white man. Margaret and Virginia keep a dinner engagement in Albuquerque at the Alvarado. Margaret wears a flowered evening dress of crown-tested rayon, topped off with a white fox short jacket. Virginia wears a two-toned cactus green dinner gown with an evening wrap of Russian links.
Two other charmingly dressed girls wait in the lobby. This is a stunning burgundy leaf evening dress with a white background of crown-tested rayon. The gray silver fox jacket is worn casually. Here is a brilliant plaid dinner dress with a tight-fitting jacket and with a knotted scarf worn around the shoulders. Note how pockets are outlined in the same jersey material as the skirt. The four Paramount girls and Miss Lawrence were given a big surprise. The studio gave them a week's vacation, so here they are in a Stratoliner flying to Phoenix, Arizona. TWA planes bring new speed, new service to all America. Indispensable in peace, invaluable in war. City of Acoma, oldest continuously inhabited city in the United States, is perched high on a mesa. Huts of adobe huddle in protection against the elements. From our armchair seat in the sky, we see Arizona's famous Valley of the Sun at Phoenix. Camelback Mountain is outlined on the horizon, while below appears Camelback Inn, where the girls will soon be sun lazing. Natural desert backgrounds blend perfectly with the original landscaping of the inn, one of the most beautiful of more than a score of resort hotels in the Phoenix Sun Country, where thousands of vacationists relax and find new frontiers of fun. Well, where are the girls? Yippee, ride em, cowboy! Could one of our girls be in that station wagon? Why, it's Virginia in frontier costume. The ranch foreman gives her a hearty western welcome. How about a breakfast ride tomorrow, says he. It's a date, says she. Margaret and Esther explore the grounds in their dresses of Selenese rayon. Esther's jersey casual dress of two-tone desert sand is nicely balanced with embroidered pockets. Margaret's jersey casual is two-tone cactus green with soft embroidery around the yoke. The grounds of our resort are studded with wild cactus. Martha wears a stop red station wagon coat that accompanies a vacation mood. Underneath, a blue gabardine slack suit makes a colorful contrast. Sunrise on the desert as the girls awake early for their breakfast ride. Orange, gold, and purple tents flood the morning sky. In frontier pants, western high-heeled boots, and 10-gallon Stetson hats, the breakfast party keeps an appointment with Romy, ranch foreman, who has the horses saddled and raring to go. Fashion makes way for comfort in western clothes. A brisk ride across the desert and a fire is quickly built. Mmm, mmm. Can't you just taste those eggs and bacon and coffee? Just the dish for a Western appetite. Grub's ready, folks. Come and get it. Here you find the friendliest people on Earth. It must be the desert air. Sun lazing at the pool follows the breakfast ride. Martha lounges in the patriotic colors of red, white, and blue. Her crisscross bodice tops a full skirt with assured matlatex waistband. Esther's blue and red floral bathing suit is a three-piece costume. Virginia with a red, white, and blue dressmaker play suit, just as fashionable for a dip in the pool. Margaret's patio slack suit is thoroughly American and typical of colorful resort wear. Styled in jersey, the ensemble features the long torso and shored fullness inset in the slacks. The boys have comfort, too, in Palm Beach clothes, which provide a wardrobe that meets every occasion. Sports are varied at Camelback, and we next find our vacationers playing the old shipboard game of shuffleboard. Virginia scores with a cotton daisy pattern play dress, and I might add, with a well-placed shot. Pinafore ruffles form sleeves for Virginia's frock. Did you notice Margaret cast aside that wraparound skirt? 
Now she wears only the matching swimsuit in blue and white, shirred and elasticized in the new process called matlatex. Approaching, we see the long-skirted version of the daisy pattern dress with pinafore ruffled sleeves. Martha is wearing a stunning cabana dress of cotton. Esther's Latin loveliness is apparent here in a striking Aztec print with peasant blouse of flattering fullness and bare midriff. This costume clearly shows the good neighbor diplomacy that has influenced North American fashions for the year 1941. As Martha and Virginia stroll away, the shuffleboard game goes merrily on. During the cocktail hour, Margaret appears in a sophisticated sheer night blue dress with white yoke embroidered with beaded daisies and edged with perky white piquet. Appropriate for the cocktail hour is the double-breasted Palm Beach jacket and gray-blue trousers. A pretty lawn setting is just the place for this white rayon gabardine slack suit with a very new silhouette of flared tunic-length jacket and matlatex girdle. Topping the costume is an attractive turban of white coin dots on a lime background. Striped sandals complete the ensemble. Notice the Palm Beach suit in new tallow and white. Thinking of a game of tennis, Margaret? Virginia joins the group looking for a tennis partner. She's smartly attired in a two-piece white gabardine play suit with detachable skirt and matching shoes. When the skirt is removed, Virginia and Margaret discover their shirred elastic waistbands of matlatex are identical and exceptionally comfortable for attractive sportswear. Tennis game over, Virginia changes into a sun outfit of bloused white cotton briefer with bare midriff, striped hand-woven cotton skirt and full panel inset. This charming cabana dress has a Tahitian print design. Her briefer has a double tie in front and the midriff is bare. Margaret sees the long twilight shadows of Camelback Mountain creeping across the desert floor to the Emerald Pool below. She suggests a dip, so here we are. And we have two girls sharing a four-piece jersey Tahitian floral costume. One has the swimming combination of brief bra and sarong draped skirt. A sunburst suit of mouth latex, elastic and snug, clings to the figure and makes for a slenderizing effect. Ideal for a shopping trip is this attractive Bolero costume of cartwheel print and Miami crepe, with blouse and lapel facings in monotone shade. Stepping briskly down the walk comes Virginia in a print dress of toast and precious blue with a hip-length woolen jacket of matching toast. Pleated collars and cuffs are a completing trim. Age-old sawara cactus surrounds the open-air cocktail lounge. Here we have a patriotic dress complete with chevrons, evidencing the military influence in 1941 fashions. This cocktail dress features a newly draped separate skirt and a matching bolero jacket. Again, the military dress, but this time with a street-length skirt. It's set off with a self-material red belt. Well, doesn't he look comfortable? Again, our designers have gone south of the border in obtaining the motif for a cotton embroidered dress copied from the Polaro native costume of Panama. And so reluctantly, our girls leave the sun country. Miss Vera Logsdon, veteran TWA hostess, steps primly in the newest of Sky Girl uniforms of stratosphere blue. Now off to the most scenic flight in all the world, the air trip over the Grand Canyon of the Arizona, Lake Mead and Boulder Dam. Our first impressive air view en route to the Grand Canyon is San Francisco Peaks, where Mother Earth stands on her tiptoes, greeting the heavens with a mantle of snow. 
we approach Meteor Crater, where a giant fist has smashed into the Earth's crust, leaving a hole a mile wide. Martha O'Driscoll sees tremendous vistas, inspiring views. Doggone it, where are the adjectives to describe the magnificent Grand Canyon? Flying on west over the Colorado River, a huge slab of dazzling white concrete between two narrow canyon walls becomes Boulder Dam, greatest engineering achievement of man. Lake Mead extends way back 100 miles behind the dam. More Americans visit this 3,000 square mile Boulder Dam area near Las Vegas, Nevada than any other national park in the United States. Winding highways curl and twist their way on the canyon sides. Here is provided inspiration and pride for all Americans to share. We land at Boulder City Airport, only seven miles from Lake Mead and Boulder Dam. Two most pleasing costumes on our trip were seen at the dock at Lake Mead before boarding the motorboat for a sightseeing ride. This is a tropical red-tailored suit with full English drape and new long-length coat. The newest in sports shoes are Joyce Cooley's. This pretty brunette is dressed in a misty blue reefer with red coolies to match. A fast cruiser takes us for a ride on the placid waters of Lake Mead, leaving behind a highway on water as our wake ripples away in the distance. The shores are rimmed by desert mountains, but here and there an island has been formed. Cathedral Rock is a chalk cliff that stands alone in isolated beauty. So we take off from Boulder City, heading towards Los Angeles on the last stage of our grand air trip and vacation. The girls are reminded that horizons in the air, like fashion horizons, are reached only to reappear again and again. As Tennyson said nearly a century ago, for we dipped into the future far as human eye can see, saw the vision of the world and all the wonder that would be saw the heavens fill with commerce, argosies of magic sails, pilots of the purple twilight dropping down with costly bales.